What is culture? Culture is practice. It is practiced by a particular group of people for a significant period of time. This time period can range from a couple of days or weeks, for example, when you make new friends, or it can range all the way up to centuries and centuries, for example, in forming organized religion, such as Christianity, Buddhism, so on and so forth. Now, throughout this time period, more often than not, certain social norms tend to form. And while these social norms aren't bad per se, it can get dangerous when people start to get too comfortable within their social norms and start differentiating each other according to it. I, right now, am 19, which makes me a young adult, and I think I could say that I've lived a relatively dynamic life when it comes to my educational career, and that is to say, I've moved around a lot during my student life. I was born in Seoul, South Korea, and when I was about five, I moved to, I moved to Arizona and went to kindergarten there. After that, I came to Daegu, and then I started my elementary years. At the fifth grade, I moved to Atlanta, and then after that, I came back to Daegu to start middle school here in DIS. I graduated DIS, then I went straight to a regular Korean public high school. Currently, I just finished my freshman year at Kyungyi University. So, you can see that I've done a lot of moving and shifting around, so I think it's safe for me to say that I was involved in many different cultures. Now, it seemed to me that everywhere I went, there always seemed to be some type of discrimination that was present. Now, I'm not talking about the explicit discrimination that we're all used to hearing about, but I'm talking about the more implicit and subtle ones. I really enjoyed my two years in Atlanta. I would even consider it the two most significant years of my life in terms of shaping who I am today. However, now that I look back, there are some eyebrow-raising moments that I've faced. For example, all of my best friends and the friends that I still keep in touch with today, they're all Korean. Now, I thought that was pretty interesting because while I'm not trying to cause any speculation about all the other friends being, uh, being a racist or discriminating me, I am saying that there's a possibility that they weren't as comfortable with me than with everyone else, mainly because at that, part of their, um, at that part of their life, they really haven't seen anyone outside of America and whose first language isn't English. Then, I've noticed something a little bit more significant here in DIS. I joined DIS a little bit late, a semester to be exact, and DIS at the time, although it was an international school, it was a Korean majority school. But there were, there were a little bit of foreigners here and there, but then at the time, I was mostly Korean. So, um, uh, so like at that time, when people were talking, I could instantly tell on my first day of school the difference in the intimacy between the Korean friends and the foreign friends. You know when like a group of people are trying to have a conversation, so they're like in a circle, and there's always the one or two people like on the edge of the circle or trying to get in the conversation that aren't doing it very successfully. Yeah, those are always the foreigners. And one of these foreigners actually ended up becoming one of my best friends. So I asked him one day if he ever felt like he was left out just because he was a foreigner in a Korean majority society. And he replied by saying that on his first day of school, there were seven boys, including himself, six of them are Korean. And in that classroom, you were allowed to sit in pairs. So one person automatically had to be left out. Guess what that person was? You guessed it. So on his first day of school, right off the bat, he was the person to be left out. I noticed similar things in my college life. In almost every lecture, there are a few foreign students. And I talk to these students, some of them are exchange students, some of them just completely moved to Korea. And while they're, they're students just like us, college students just like us, um, it's sometimes, or more times than not, the Korean friends end up sitting with their friends, leaving the foreigners at one part of the room by themselves. Now, I'll be the first person to admit, I find myself doing this from time to time, and I can confidently say it's not because we have any negative feelings towards these foreigners, it's probably because we're not as comfortable with them than we are with other Koreans. Now, these are just discrimination or differentiation uh, based on one's ethnicity. 
I'd like to talk to you about a different type of discrimination. I told you already, after I graduated from DIS, I went to a regular Korean public high school. And this is a pretty rare path to take because once you graduate from an international school, you either stay at that school, go to a different international school, or go abroad. Now, none of them were the case for me. So, on my first day of school, it was pretty hard for me to make friends. Groups were already formed based on, because everyone already had someone they were familiar with. Now, it's mainly because they probably went to the same middle school or they went to the same academy and so on and so forth. But, so it was really hard for me in the beginning. But this all changed on my first English class of my high school. Because in a regular Korean public high school, um, not a lot of people really have a chance to study abroad for a significant period of time. And thus, they're not as fluent in English. And it was this, likewise, our Korean public high school was the same. I was pretty much the only, one, only person to be fluent in English. So when this teacher asked me to read a paragraph from a textbook, and I started reading, I could feel everyone's attention shifting towards me. Now after that class, a good 10 to 20 people approached me, asked me for my name, and wanted to get to know me better. So I met a lot of, I let, I met a lot of my high school friends through that incident. I have a similar story in college recently. I was recently, I mean, I was, um, I was pretty much a regular freshman during my college life. And one day, I was lucky enough to get a decent score in this supposedly hard class. Now, it was good for first in the entire class, but I was happy, but I didn't really tell anybody. But then, this fact somehow got leaked because, you know, Koreans, they're very into which person getting which grade. So, and how they figured it out is a different story for another day. But the fact is that it got leaked. And then as soon as it got leaked, people I've never talked to before started approaching me, asking me for advice and help for that class's final exam. Now, I've noticed that once you're good at something or you've done something good, people automatically approach you. That is to say, people selectively choose who they want to be friends with. That is to say, they choose who they want to be friends with based on how beneficial they think you could be. Now this action, in and of itself, is discrimination because it subconsciously ranks people from top to bottom based on how valuable they think you are. It's preposterous to think that people still, to this day, think they're better or worse than a certain person, but we still do this anyways subconsciously. When we start forgetting the simple and unequivocal fact that every single person here is equal, or everywhere is equal, that's when society starts to derail. We have plenty of examples that happened recently in real life. Let's start with the Rohingya, where neither Bangladesh nor Myanmar wanted to, um, wanted to accept these Muslim minorities into their society. The Catalonians thought they were better than every other region in Spain and thus strived for independence. Trump, it looks like, seems like he thinks less of every other country that's not named America, and he, he, does, he refuses to help countries that are in need, most, most notably recently, Puerto Rico. All of these happened fundamentally because one group thought they were superior to another. So, how do we fix this? There isn't a tangible solution, but rather an intangible one. And that is to always remember and keep in mind that there's only one thing and one and only thing all of seven billion of us on earth have in common. And that is that we are human beings. You are not better than anyone just because you lucked into a wealthier family. Just because you, you happen to have a higher IQ so you're smarter at a particular field. Just because you won the birth lottery and you were considered more beautiful in this society. None of these arbitrary things factor into you fundamentally being human. So, all in all, in the status quo, and especially in a capitalistic society, although we preach equality, there seems to be an invisible 
or transparent hierarchy that exists. We must learn to break this hierarchy down, and the first step and the cornerstone in doing so is acknowledging that every single one of you are the same. Thank you.